Thank you for joining us. It is great achievements and breakthroughs in human history and the research leading up to them that brings out the very best in us. The most important conference on human age reversal just took place for the third time in San Diego, California, and over 1,000 people attended this Revolution Against Aging and Death Conference, the largest age reversal event ever, with Bill Falloon, the co-founder of Life Extension, giving a keynote speech on scientific breakthroughs on inducing age reversal. Bill just returned, and we'll join him for his update presentation. Human age reversal, we may be there already. Human studies are now ready to begin to confirm meaningful reversal of pathological aging processes. These clinical trials aim to alter older humans so that they function as much younger individuals. Even modest success will result in a paradigm shift that will impart enormous societal benefits, such as sparing Medicare from insolvency. Life extension is not standing idle while 5,000 Americans die each day from age-related illnesses. Joining us are physician scientists who want to hurry up these technologies to keep people from aging to death. While Life Extension is pushing these projects forward, we need financial help to ensure these studies are carried through to fruition. tragedy of lost data. If you fail to do a baseline blood test and you undergo some aggressive age reversal interventions, wow, have we lost data forever. We'll never be able to recapture where you were in the beginning. We'll know where you were afterwards, but we won't know where you were in the beginning. And again, going back to JAMA, this deals with the uh, process of age reversal known as synolytics. Synolytic therapy, they selectively remove senescent cells from your body. As we grow older, we have certain cells that we would wish would just die. They linger, they emit chronic inflammatory signals, they do all kinds of damage, including secreting protein degrading enzymes that literally eat away at our healthy cells. We need to purge our body of these dysfunctional senescent cells that really circumvent, circumvent the ability of the regenerative therapies to have their full effect. And to give you an example uh, of what these senescent cells are like, uh, just imagine you have an uncle that you were maybe not particularly close to, but he only had two weeks to live, and he begged, can you please not let me die in an institution? Will you please let me die at home around some family members? So you think, okay, two weeks, we will put ourselves out. We'll bring that sick uncle in there. He's vomiting, he's moaning, he's emitting all kinds of terrible odors, but we're gonna put up with it for two weeks. That sick uncle stays in your living room for two weeks, and it goes for four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, your life is turned upside down. You really just want that individual to do what he's supposed to do. Instead, he lingers. And that's what's happening in your body with these accumulated senescent cells. They're spewing out pro-inflammatory cytokines. They're emitting these protein-degrading enzymes. It, they are killing you, literally. So getting rid of them is essential. Now, this study was published 2015. They took Two compounds, a prescription drug called dacitinib and a dietary supplement that you can buy anywhere called quercetin, and they gave them to old animals. Those rodents had a systemic reversal of their aging process merely by removing these senescent cells. That's all they had to do to derive all of those benefits. It really shows you how deadly and toxic these senescent cells are in our body. We need to get them out of our body, and CNN has been recognizing it with some media reports that it's time to start taking this animal research and trying it out on people, and even the federal government putting money into senolytic research. They want to see what happens when older people have their uh, senescent cells eliminated, how much health span can be restored. This could spare Medicare from insolvency. Now, the popular press is picking up 
on the senescent cells by referring to them as zombie cells. And it's a very accurate depiction because just one senescent cell in a group of healthy cells in a tissue by emitting these metalloproteinases, these are these protein degrading enzymes, well they're killing your healthy cells. They're like reaching out and biting the healthy cell and then spewing out inflammatory factors. You need to purge your body of these senescent cells if we are going to achieve our objective of living to 2030 when CRISPR-Cas9 will solve the whole problem for us. We don't have to worry about taking dacetinab and quercetin and all the other interventions. But right now, we're dealing with tourniquets, and we've got some really good tourniquets available to us. And again, the media is picking up on the fact that we need to do something about the senescent cell burden that anyone over the age of 30 or 40 is carrying with them, and it is shortening their healthy lifespan. This is a, a pioneer with the uh, trial on metformin, where he is hoping to be able to show that metformin really does delay aging and improve health spans, and he's also advocating, well, maybe before metformin, we need to get rid of these senescent cells, because whatever benefit metformin derives, the senescent cells get in the way. And it's not just acetinib and quercetin. Peptides and a number of different compounds are being developed to purge our body of senescent cells. And when that happens, they're seeing old animals grow biologically younger, including improvements in their kidney function, which is a real good measure of aging because unfortunately a lot of us uh, suffer kidney failure before everything else goes. Now, Unity has raised some big money to study senolytic drugs. This is spectacular, but they're not even starting their clinical trial yet. It's months away, and then it needs to go through the clinical trial process, the FDA approval process. We don't have that kind of, kind of time to wait. So we're advocating that people engage in a senolytic protocol right now remove your senescent cells before they kill you. And a study come out in July, it emphasized more than anything else how deadly these senescent cells are. They looked at younger mice who had senescent cells transplanted in their bodies, and it resulted in accelerated degenerative aging. And those senescent cells planted into young healthy mice, they spread rapidly throughout their bodies. And this is happening to our bodies right now if we don't get these senescent cells out. And when they implanted senescent cells into older mice, wow, what a horrible effect. The mice suffered the same kind of physical decline and they died sooner. Now, if we were talking 10 years ago or even five years ago, we'd be looking at this data saying, wow, we cannot do anything about the fact we harbor senescent cells. We're just going to have to live with them as long as we can and drop dead. Great news, great news. The same study where they transplanted senescent cells into old mice, they then gave them dacetinib and coercetin. And what they were able to find is spectacular results. These are both normally aged mice with lots of senescent cells and aged mice with more of them injected, but by the dacetinib and quercetin being administered, they were able to alleviate the physical dysfunction and improve post-treatment survival by 36%. Wow, 36% longevity enhancements by using senolytic therapies. Time Magazine picked up on this right after the study was published. And they made it very clear that if there's just one senescent cell amongst a group of seven to 15,000 healthy cells, that one senescent cell initiates physical decline. That's all it takes. This is how toxic these cells are and why we need to remove them from our body. And then the LA Times did a more extensive article and brought out interesting tidbits from the study. And that is these old mice that were loaded with senescent cells normally, well, they were the human equivalent of 75 to 90 years of age. Hey, that's an age group that we can relate to. We're either at that age or getting close to it. And that means this therapy that works so well on mice could very well be applicable to people. 75 to 90 year old people who remove their senescent cells. Now, the experts are very consistent in what they tell us. They're doing these studies, they're watching aging go in reverse in their animal model studies, and they tell us to wait. They tell us to wait till more data comes in before we self-experiment with these senolytic approaches. Well, you may know me pretty well, I don't wait. We move technology ahead and we did a clinical trial on a group of people with severe bone-on-bone -bone osteoarthritis. We chose that 
category of study subject because it was working very well in the animal models and we could very quickly see, are these people getting better with their arthritis? And the incredible news is about 90% had relief of pain, improved joint mobility, and it lasted about six months. And then there was some more senescent cell accumulation and they want to repeat it. We did baseline MRIs of their joints to look at their cartilage. And in December, we're going to have the follow-up. We're going to know, did those synolytics enable cartilage regeneration to occur? Symptomatically, it looks like it did. But again, we did the baseline and we're going to do the follow-up to make sure that we're really seeing a result. This is the second time in history, I've shown this particular chart. The first time was at RADFest a couple weeks ago. This is the synolytic dosing protocol that we used in a clinical trial. And it's based on your weight. Dacitinab is a chemotherapy drug. That might frighten a lot of people away from using it. I'm gonna explain why it shouldn't in the next couple of slides. But you have to dose it very carefully. And if a physician compounds this for you, we think you'll be able to buy it at a reasonable price from a compounding pharmacy. The price uh, that it sells for to cancer patients is outrageous. So how do you get this drug? Well, if your doctor prescribes it, you can pay over $2,000 for what would be a, a two-week supply. That's two doses over a one-year uh, situation. But if we get some cooperation from the compounding pharmacies that we're working with, we think you can get that for around $200. Uh, the drug itself is not that expensive as a raw material. It's just once it achieves that FDA-approved status and gets a brand name and they sell it to cancer patients, they overcharge. So we're hoping to have compounding pharmacies very soon make dacitinab available for around $200. And that would be basically a one-time-a-year treatment most of you would do. If you had arth osteoarthritis, you might do it two times a year and this would be a very inexpensive therapy. And if you wonder, how does removing senescent cells from your joints alleviate or eliminate arthritis? How does that happen? Well, think about this. You've got these senescent cells in your joints that are emitting pro-inflammatory factors, and possibly worse than that, emitting, secreting these protein-degrading enzymes. So your joint cartilage is being destroyed by the accumulated burden of senescent cells. So you take the dacitinab quercetin, you kill off the senescent cells, macrophages clear them out, and then the inflammation and the protein degradation, well, that abates. And then our chondrocytes can restore joint cartilage. And if you want to take it a step further, which is part of our protocol, by the way, of reversing aging systemically, you could add NAD therapy. Because we've seen in clinical trials that we've done on NAD infusion that osteoarthritis seems to mitigate. We're seeing that consistently occur. And the reason that it does that is, well, sirtuin-6 is necessary for the chondrocytes to replenish. And resveratrol and NAD, they boost sirtuin-6. The senescent cells are removed with quercetin and dacitinab. And all of a sudden, you've got a, a horrific osteoarthritis problem that may dissipate or go away completely. We are advocating physician supervision. We're amalgamating a list of physicians who will prescribe these medications and over see you over so you can do it safely. NAD, we've talked a lot about that in this church. The data keeps getting stronger, that this is a way to slow down, if not reverse aging. Time Magazine covered it earlier this year. A prestigious researcher talked about the fact that when it's given to older mice, they act younger, behave younger, and they live longer. This is spectacular. And what David Sinclair talked about is that NAD may be the closest uh, intervention, we've gotten to a fountain of youth, and if we don't have any NAD in our body, we die. It's that simple. And the problem is, as we grow older, our NAD levels decrease. Now, vascular aging, major problem. Study done at Harvard showed that resveratrol and NAD replenishment, wow, reversal of vascular aging, improved circulation throughout our body. This is major. American Heart Association, just a couple months ago, comes out with a report indicating that they want to see NAD therapy experimented on in people with congestion 
digestive heart failure. This kills a lot of Americans. Eight million suffer from it. And when we got credentialed people like the American Heart Association, this is absolutely spectacular. They're looking to put money into using NAD to repair our broken DNA. And that's the primary mechanism by which NAD works, by the way. Every day, our cells sustain breaks to our DNA. And NAD comes in and repairs that. Well, as our NAD levels go down, there's nothing there to repair our DNA. We literally die of pathological aging or something else because of an NAD deficiency. Now, these uh, findings here relate to the decline in NAD levels that occur with aging. This is a lot of research that's been funded over the last two years, and it shows between 20 and 40, you're in good shape. You have a nice high level of NAD, and then between 40 and 60, it declines. But what happens after 60 is really scary. It can drop down to virtually one to eight nanograms per milliliter. And at that stage, you are set for virtually every degenerative disorder out there. But these findings, by the way, some of them have been published recently. Some of them have not yet been published. You're privileged to learn information that will be in a prestigious scientific journal soon. You're learning it right now. The fact is, if you're over the age of 40 to 50, you really need to restore your NAD. And this is how people are doing it. They're undergoing infusions of NAD and boosting it up back up to what a young range was, and then they can keep going, keep the NAD high, simply by using a dietary supplement called nicotinamide riboside. Now, some people think, well, why don't I just take a lot of the nicotinamide riboside capsules? It doesn't work for older people to get you to that youthful range. It will boost your levels, meaning it's good for you, but it's not going to get you from, let's say, 8 nanograms per, per microliter up to 40. It's just not going to do that. So our typical recommended dose is between 250 and 750 a day, and if that doesn't boost your NAD sufficiently, use an infusion or a patch that has to be prescribed by a doctor, and you have to go visit a doctor for this stuff. These are some of the inconveniences you may have to endure, but the benefits, wow, they're huge. Now, we know what happens when NAD levels plummet. We're talking about systemic aging and eventual premature death. This is what happens. But what I'm going to show you next are findings from a study. It's going to be published very soon, but this is pre-publication information of what happens when a group of older people, average age 79, in a poor state of health, these are typically metabolic syndrome patients, poor state of health, they underwent NAD infusions for about six to seven consecutive days. And these were the type of benefits that they were able to see in the clinic that these people were able to benefit from by boosting their NAD using infusion therapy. This data here is only the second time it's been shown in public. It will appear in a medical journal, and it may open the world's eyes to the fact that in addition to synolytics, you want to boost your NAD if you want to remain young and healthy. So this is a little bit outdated right now. We're not suggesting people get their blood levels tested necessarily. If you're over age 50, you probably need to do something to get those NAD levels up to where you need to be. And what I emphasized everywhere I talk is the fact that a lot of us don't recognize that we're running out of time. I put age 64 up there because that's what I'm going to be very soon. That means I only have 20 years left. I've only got 20 years left to figure out this problem of biological aging and the degenerative diseases associated with it. And a lot of us have less time. So I'm advocating everywhere I go for accelerated age reversal research. Whatever we can do to accelerate the technology, we will live longer. And yes, the billionaires are putting big money into the research. Jeff Bezos is 54 years of age. He puts a billion dollars a year, by the way, into space exploration. He's put less money into age reversal research. We applaud the billionaires for putting big money into age reversal research. They're virtually all doing it, by the way. All these Silicon Valley people who did the impossible with IT technology, they're looking at aging as just another problem to solve. And the problem is they don't have the sense of urgency that we do in this church. They are going to take their time with it because they figure they've got the time. We don't, and I don't feel that I have the time. So we want to accelerate all of this research. We want to put all of the different age reversal interventions that you've heard about where we talked a lot about metformin and how important it was for you to take that prescription drug to slow your rate of aging. Well, that's pretty much accepted now. 
And what we want to do now is experiment with a number of other therapies and get a sequential order together so that no one has to needlessly suffer these types of consequences. And we do have people, by the way, contacting us saying, you know what, I, my mother now needs your services. And they're, they've had like a massive stroke or they've got sepsis. They've got like a couple days to live with a sepsis and maybe a couple miserable years to live with the, the paralysis from the stroke. And we have to tell them, no, it's kind of too late for that. Uh, you know, I mean, some people try it anyway, but we're not telling people in nursing homes to utilize these technologies. We're advocating you take advantage of them now before you wind up into a condition when we cannot save your life. The media is putting George Church up there in a deity type status because if his CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing technology works as well as it does at the cellular level, it does reverse aging in cells, by the way, it's doing some nice things in animals. If this works in people, aging will become a relic of the past, the same way cholera is in societies that practice good hygiene and have access to antibiotics. Aging will be something that you'll tell your kids about and they'll wonder whatever motivated you to do anything if you're just going to age to death. And George Church is not the only person using CRISPR technology to induce stem cells, pluripotent stem cells, to rejuvenate our tissues systemically. Uh, most of you understand how stem cells work. I'll briefly describe it. They produce somatic cells, which are the functional cells in our body. If we can turn our old functional cells back into induced pluripotent stem cells, that may be another way to achieve an indefinitely extended biological healthy lifespan. And scientists around the world are engaged in it. There is no upper longevity limit as to how long people can live. This study was published in Nature last year. A group of people got together and said, is there a way, reason why people can't live forever? And they said, well, not re really. There's nothing that stands in the way. It's just a matter of advancing the technology. And again, Popular Science did a very nice article about me and all these scientists who are trying to make us live longer. And they singled me out because I'm a little bit different. I'm trying to get us to live indefinitely, forever. And the technology is moving in our favor. We just need to put the pieces together and people are going to live a lot longer, a lot healthier, and they may not die. So again, this stair-step approach, which I presented at RADFest, we were suggesting rapamycin be initiated first, but it turned out that virtually everyone at RADFest had been on either metformin or calorie restriction, intermittent fasting. They were doing something to boost their AMPK, which then lowers excess mTOR. Most people have too much mTOR, causes cancer, causes obesity, creates all kinds of problems. So this stair-step approach is utilizing the age reversal interventions in a rational way to get us to that year 2030. That should enable us to reach the singularity when our neocortex merges with the cloud and we become immortal beings at our option, and I will take that option. I will say, yes, give me immortality. Uh, so again, media coverage with respected people talking about get to year 2050. Make it to 2050 and you may live forever. And our dilemma is that very few of us will live that long if we don't aggressively intervene. If people work together to solve a problem, it is much more likely to occur in our lifetime. Companies are being set up, by the way, to do the machine uploading to transmit our brain into the cloud so we truly will have that transhumanist ability to not ever have to die. We set up uh, basically a new name. This, is, this used to be called the Society for the Rescue of Our Elders. It just wasn't catching on for some reason. So we changed the name to the Society for Age Reversal. It's a public benefit group. We don't accept donations. Uh, we don't get involved financially with anybody. What we simply do is try to track data. We encourage people to get their blood tested, send their blood tests to a new portal we'll soon have set up on our website. And then we know where you are baseline. And if you tell us you underwent NAD or senolytics or metformin, rapamycin or young plasma, we'll be able to then see your follow-up results and then tabulate this in a way that we'll be able to gain real world access to what people are doing to slow down and reverse their aging process. Again, we don't have any conflicts of interest because we don't take money, we don't invest in companies, and by that virtue, we're able to disseminate 
accurate, unbiased information. That is the website, Rescue Elders. It is being improved every single day. So if you log on to it and you don't find exactly what you want, don't log on to it in a week. You may find some very, very interesting information and opportunities. And for those who just like to write checks to a charity, this is a brand new charity we set up. It only funds human age reversal research. It does absolutely nothing else. So if people are looking for a tax deduction, they can write a check, any amount to this charity. It will only be used, again, for the purposes that I've stated, human age reversal research. We've got 5,000 people who die every day in this country. We've got a lot of people that we can work with. So again, this is the website for people who want to stay informed about the availability of senolytics, availability of doctors who are prescribed being NAD, uh, the availability of rapamycin at a reasonable price, uh, metformin, uh, young plasma. This is all going to be talked about on the Rescue Elders site. It already has a lot of data. Uh, but what we do is if you register and we have your email address, we will update you. So that pretty much wraps up my talk. And I'll be happy to answer any questions from the crowd. Human age reversal, we may be there already. Human studies are now ready to begin to confirm meaningful reversal of pathological aging processes. These clinical trials aim to alter older humans so that they function as much younger individuals. Even modest success will result in a paradigm shift that will impart enormous societal benefits, such as sparing Medicare from insolvency. Life extension is not standing idle while 5,000 Americans die each day from age-related illnesses. Joining us are physician scientists who want to hurry up these technologies to keep people from aging to death. While life extension is pushing these projects forward, we need financial help to ensure these studies are carried through to fruition. With Intel RealSense technology inside, now you can bend the rules of creativity outside. Is it a cool breeze on a scorching day? Or a cozy corner on a cold night? <laughs> that every room of the house is as inviting as the next. And the air is fresh and clean for everyone. That humidity is where it belongs. At Carrier, comfort means more than just the temperature. And the people who invented modern air conditioning keep inventing new ways to make you comfortable, however you define it. This concludes our special show for today. I'm Richard Peretz. Thank you for being with us.